Good afternoon, my name is Jim Collin and welcome to the latest edition of our Cult Classics uh, documentary where we look at Cult Classic TV series and movies that have left their mark uh, throughout the generations. This week we go back into the vault, we go back into 2001, 19 years ago, uh, actually 20 years ago if, if truth be told, uh, since the release of one of the iconic sort of horror sort of characters that resonates uh, worldwide in terms of the fear of God, in terms of young children, the immortal, the unkilling machine that was Jason X, the man that Jason Voorhees, the man that could not die, the man that could not be killed. And uh, one of the, the, this movie, Jason X, it theoried about Jason being brought into the future, into the year 2025, 2025, uh, and basically then a border board, a spaceship, and uh, the, 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 the uh, documents of the spaceship then were basically trying to kill what was an unstoppable killing machine. And one of the casts of that show who played the character Waylander was the one and only Darren Jordan. I'm delighted to be joined by him. And Darren, 20 years on, if someone mentioned Jason Voorhees to you, uh, would that sort of resonate the bill or someone would say, hey, wait a sec, were you, too, were you and Jason X? <laughs> well, hey, Jim, and uh, happy to be part of your uh, show today. Yeah, that uh, I was definitely part of the, you know, slash fight of the 13th Jason uh, Voorhees vortex and world. And it was, uh, it's crazy to think that it was 20 years ago, but absolutely, it definitely does resonate. And I suppose, Derwin, uh, in terms of its popularity, it sort of never really gone away, that sort of character, the Freddy Krueger's, the Jason X, we saw remakes. I don't think it's a, a character that will never go away in terms of, we'll probably see another film incarnation maybe in three or four years' time as well due to its sort of popularity. It's just a sort of one of those characters that struck a, a chord with people, that people just in terms of horror, do you just want to keep seeing over and over again? Is that a fair assessment? Absolutely. I think that there, over time, there's always, you know, iconic figures and iconic movies uh, that come out that stay with you and stand the test of time. And certainly Jason Voorhees is one of those characters that from the very get-go, from the very first incarnation of, you know, the Friday the 13th movies kind of resonated with people and has stayed. I mean, you think about it, the amount of movies and, you know, he's still, you know, they still do Kane Hodder who played, um, you know, Jason Voorhees throughout all those movies, still goes to all the sci-fi conventions and still is incredibly popular. And people find out who he is, people absolutely go nuts, <laughs> you know, uh, for him. So it, it definitely is one of those iconic, uh, you know, stand the test of time, you know, characters for sure. And Derwin, uh, in terms of 2001, it was a big, massive production. Uh, it had a budget of 11 million and it grew 17 million worldwide. I suppose 17 million in 2001 is big figures uh, in terms of we're talking about 20 years ago. So it was a big, massive production at the time. And as a, as a young actor, were you sort of thrilled and to be excited? Was it a big deal at the time to land a role in uh, uh, Jason, Jason X? Because... Obviously, uh, we had Lexa Dyg in it. Uh, we had uh, John Peter Minza, a well-renowned actor established at that stage. Jonathan Potts was sort of well-known as well. So in terms of uh, your own sort of career, was it the, one of the big gigs for you at that time? Absolutely. You know, I, for me, you know, I remember when I got the audition uh, for Jason X and you know, it was kind of a little top secret as far as what it was, but I could kind of tell what the, the movie was. And I went in for the audition and I was just all butterflies because, you know, it was one of those movies and characters that I had grown up with, you know, as well. I remember, you know, going through high school when there was a Friday the 13th, there was always the movies on TV that night. And all of my friends would get together and it would be like midnight and you'd watch like all of the films. So it was, it was a pretty big deal for me. And the film itself, I mean, they really threw a lot, you know, at that production. It was a pretty big production you know we you know rehearsed for about three weeks and then we shot for almost three months you know on that film to, to get it quite right especially because special effects were really kind of coming into you know the forefront as far as what they could do with computer generated uh graphics you know at the time so yeah it was it was a pretty big deal and i suppose darren you mentioned the special effects team on that sort of movie and uh 
it was gripping. We had people with decapitated arms growing mm -hmm. back. We had sort of these bugs sort of reincarnating people that were sort of dead. So in terms of horror, there sort of really there was uh, with all the blood and gore that's associated with Jason Voorhees. We got that, but we got with, with a storyline as sort of as well. It almost felt like light horror, but not really uh, severe in terms of uh, possessions or demons or reincarnations. It was something that people could like and they would know that it was a real sort of a fictional sort of thing that wasn't based on any sort of true story, that there wasn't a Jason X lur lurking uh, around in their villages nearby. Right. Well, the funny thing is, is that absolutely, I mean, you know, it's all, you know, fantasy, but when you look back at that film, you know, back in 2001, the whole part of the premise behind the film was that Earth had been dec decimated, you know, by climate, and hence everybody was living on what was called Earth 2, you know, at the time. And you look at what's happening right now, yeah you know, in the, in, in the world with climate. I mean, it was very foreshadowing, you know, as far as where our world, you know, could end up. But obviously, you know, there was no, uh, J there is no Jason X, you know, or Jason Voorhees character, you know, uh, in real life. But as far as the, the world around the film, like it, it's, it was pretty foreshadowing. And Derwin, in terms of the set, I know I'm really jogging your sort of memory in terms of the layout of the sort of spaceship as such. Was that sort of two joining sets that made sort of, that resemble sort of one sort of shot location that resemble one sort of ship? Uh, and uh, I suppose in terms of that, it was it all sort of laid out in terms of the interior to sort of resemble a sort of futuristic sort of ship? Absolutely. Well, what they did, I mean, this was a complete uh, studio shoot. You know, we didn't shoot on any locations and we shot it in Toronto, Ontario, Canada. And they basically rented out the entire warehouse, you know, of this film production. So we had different parts of the ship were in different parts of the warehouse. So, you know, we had, you know, the, the main part of the ship, you know, one part we had, you know, the hallways. We had the, the part where, unfortunately, my character dies, which is like this hub you know, that gets broken off. So it was all these sort of little rooms almost that you would go to. And it's like, depending on the day that you were shooting, like, oh, right, we're in, you know, the main hall today. Or, oh, hey, we're in the hull of the ship today. Oh, we're in, you know, the, the bottom of the ship today. And it's like, uh, you know, there were all these different little rooms. And it was like this maze, you know, that you would go through. I remember the first time they took us through basically on a tour. So we knew where everything was. And it was kind of like being on a giant university campus almost you know, with all of these different sections, you know, that they had laid out. And they did a phenomenal job with that. I mean, you really felt like when you were in there that you were in this space and in this world. And I suppose, uh, Derwin, in terms of, um, you mentioned the shoot, and I imagine with all the special effects and the makeup and the costumes that were going on, you could be, for some days, you could be looking at 13, maybe 14 hour days where they really sort of long, intense in terms of, I imagine there was so many shootings from different angles and different sort of takes in terms of the deaths to sort of portray all different types of views from every di different sort of shot in terms of that, that goes with that sort of demise to make it, just for, especially for special effects, I imagine, with Greenscape. Oh, absolutely. I mean, you know, any any movie, you know, you're going to be looking at long days just because of the way, you know, film is shot and they have to be so specific and, you know, things can obviously you know, go wrong. But when you're talking about, you know, shooting movie with special effects as well, you know, there are so many details that you have to make sure that you get right. So, you know, film days are generally, you know, you're lucky if you get out in less than 10 hours, but usually you're looking at, you know, 12, 13, 14, you know, hour days. And it's, uh, it's, it's painstaking because it's, it's very meticulous, you know, the work that they have to do, you know, sometimes it'd be like, you know, hey, you know, during your hand needs to be a half an inch higher so that when we, you know, imprint in, you know, the thing that's in your hand, it actually shows up where it's supposed to be, you know, on the screen, you know, that kind of thing. Or sometimes I'm looking at something like, oh, we need your eye line to be a little bit more to the left so that way it actually looks like you're looking at, you know, the thing that we're going to, you know, put in later on in, uh, in computer graphics. So yeah, they're long days, they're long days, but I mean, it's, you know, you see the end result, you know, they have to be meticulous for it to look good. And I suppose, uh, Derwin, in terms of uh, the when this movie came out, did you, were you invited to a special screening as a cast or were you, did, when was the first time you actually saw it in person and were you sort of blown away? I know special effects, you can sort of visualize in your head what they might look at, but were you pleasantly surprised when you saw the, 
the final product uh, on screen for the very first time? I was. I thought, again, you know, for back in, you know, 2001, I mean, for what they were doing, we did have, we, did, uh, we got a special cast and crew screening, you know, of the movie before they released it, you know, um, worldwide. And, you know, all of us were like, wow, they really did a phenomenal job on that. We were kind of speechless throughout as we were watching it because you were, you kind of got very engaged, you know, with how everything flowed and how everything worked. And at the end of it, there was like this huge cheer from everybody like, whoa, we did that. Like you guys did that. You actually made that, that happen, you know, and it was, uh, it was pretty great. It was pretty great. And Derwin, you mentioned about Comic Cons and horrors. Uh, after uh, Jason X, did you find yourself attending one or two or being wanted in terms of uh, that whole sort of franchise and universe people? At the time, was it a very hectic in terms of promotion and a media sort of work based around the movie? There was definitely, you know, stuff that came up. I unfortunately didn't get a chance to go to any of the conventions. I got asked to go to a couple and just my schedule didn't work out with uh, with being able to go. And even, you know, to this day, there's sometimes, you know, possible like, hey, you know, this event might be happening. Are you interested you know, going again? It's one of it's one of those films and one of those, you know, icons in the horror genre that again will never go away. So I'm always amazed that still 20 years later, you know, I get fan mail. <laughs> sometimes people going hey you know i you know i've had this film and saw you in it and it was really great and you know really enjoyed your work and you know it's really i'm really a fan of, of the franchise so yeah it's it's, it's very enduring mm. and i know Darwin, you have other projects in the pipeline and i'm just going to one final question there on uh, jason x uh, for mm -hmm. you in terms of uh all, uh, we have now all the streaming surface, streaming services like Netflix, Amazon Prime, mm -hmm. uh, Disney and all that. Do you think there's a possibility for maybe a mini sort of a series looking uh, at the foundations of uh, Jason X? And do you think it would be sort of very popular given the success of people have taken the likes of Batman Universe and Gotham mm -hmm. and sort of stuff like that? Do you think there's a, a open a space for the market to take some an iconic horror uh, figure like uh, Jason X and run something like that on a Netflix or an Amazon Prime or? I think there absolutely would be. I think there is such a hunger for content, you know, especially given, you know, what was happening in the last year and a bit with COVID and people being, you know, homebound, you know, for so long. I think that all of those streaming services are constantly looking for content to be able to put out to their subscribers. So if somebody were to take that baton and go, hey, let's kind of revisit this and, and create, I mean, the, the fan base is there. You know, for it. it's just a matter of somebody, you know, taking the reins and actually, you know, putting it together. But I think if they did, I think it, it would, uh, it would run, you know, they would really run with it. And Duran, I know speaking to you before we started the interview and our sort of quick chat, it's a busy time for you and you have a, a new movie uh, scheduled to come out. Uh, can you tell us a bit about that? I do. Uh, it's called Deep in the Forest and it's directed by Jeremy Lanny and, and I shot the film pre-COVID. Okay. Uh, and it it was very relevant for the political times that you know we are living in here in the United States. The premise of the film is that you know there are these two political factions who are kind of warring against each other that actually creates a civil war. And uh, you know, funnily enough, the film was supposed to come out last fall, which would have been very fitting given mm -hmm. you know the political turmoil that we had here in the United States. You know, obviously it got delayed because of COVID, and we, you know we couldn't get it out uh, in time, but. You know, it has been sold. It is it is uh, being distributed right now in Europe. And, you know, they're looking at having more of a, a wide release hopefully in the next couple of months. Yeah, Deep in the Forest, with, um, directed by Jeremy Lanny. I'm in it. Uh, Ursula Brooks, who is from Australia, is also in it. Uh, Stuart uh, Penkin, who has been around forever, is also um, you know, in the film, and he's fabulous you know, in it. So it's a really, really great political thriller, you know, that uh, I enjoy filming and that hopefully people will enjoy when they get a chance to see it. And uh, Derwin, is it set in modern times in terms of uh, the whole political landscape? Is it sort of current or futuristic or past? It's current. It's, it's current. Definitely, definitely for our current times. Absolutely. Okay. And uh, you mentioned the sort of teams and the sort of uh, civil unrest in terms of that movie. Does it sort of uh, bring you on a, a, a chapter, say, from beginning to middle or end? Or is it something that you sort of unravel the plot as you're going through in terms of trying to work out the whole premise of the movie? Or is it very much, it, it, can you very much catch the drift of the movie from the first sort of five or ten minutes on the journey that it's taking you on? Absolutely. You know, within, yeah, within the first, you know, 10 minutes of the movie, I mean, it, you, you don't really know what the movie is about, per se, when you first start. But I mean, the opening sequence is actually really well done, 
you know, by the production team. And it kind of gives you a sense of where we're going. But the, the conflict comes in rather quickly. And then you understand sort of where we are, you know, with this film. And then it kind of takes you on that journey from there. So, yeah, it's really, uh, it's well done. Uh, Darren, on that note, uh, deep into the forest, do look out for us. Look mm -hmm. out for us here in Ireland. It's, uh, as Darren said, it's been cast all across mainland Europe at the moment. So it's going to hit our shores uh, fairly soon uh, in terms of that. And I suppose, uh, Darren, if you had one sort of finally, just going back to Jason X before we finish off in our called Classics uh, TV series and looking at this movie from, to the document movie from 2001, uh, if you had some sort of memory or story from your time on Jason X where it was some sort of shoes or some day or castle cast or some joke or some sort of funny story that's just sort of day on. I, I remember interacting with a character and you know, this was a sort of thing. Is there anything that sort of springs to mind or anything even to this day, 20 years on that sort of still lives in your memory? Well, there is, and it's funny. I was actually doing the casting process Okay. you know, of this film, you know, that, you know, there's a bit of a running joke, you know, out there with horror films that often uh, characters of color get killed off very early. <laughs> you know, in these films don't kind of make it to the end. And I remember, you know, when I got to go into audition for it, I didn't get a chance to read the full script. They didn't release that, you know, to us. So I just had, you know, my, my sides for my audition. And uh, one of the things they said they helped, they said that helped cast me is that when I walked in the room, you know, I looked, you know, right at the director, you know, James Isaac, and I said, hey, I like the sides. I like this guy. But if he dies within the first 10 pages, I'm out. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and they all laughed. I said, I'm, I'm serious, man. So it was like, you know, I don't mind if he dies, but he's got to make it through. And it's funny, you know, my character, you know, not to give away, does does bite the bullet, but not till almost the very end. Nearly made like, it. Nearly <laughs> made it. <laughs> exactly. Nearly made it into the escape ship. He was uh, yeah. I know. I was like right there. I thought, you know, people and people when they saw the film, they're like, oh, we thought you were going to make it, man. We yeah. thought you finally. You should have chucked Chuck yeah. Campbell's character out in front of you. <laughs> and then you would have been, you would have been home and host. Yeah, but that's, that's kind of the best story is that, you know, when I walked in that room, I said, hey, if this guy guys dies in the first 10 pages, I'm, I'm out. That's it. I'm not doing it. I'm not doing it. And they all, uh, they all laugh. They're like, hey, you'll be all right. You'll be all right. I said, okay. When I read the full script, I'm like, okay, I can handle being, you know, being killed off page 96. I can handle that. <laughs> Uh, Derwin Jordan, on that note, uh, thanks for joining us uh, this evening to share your memories uh, in terms of this week, looking at our cult classic t TV and movie series. Going back uh, to 2001, Jason X, Derwin Jordan played the role of Waylander in the movie. Uh, we also got to hear about uh, Derwin's new movie coming up, uh, Deep Into the Forest, uh, mm -hmm. which has been uh, which have been distributed all across Europe and no doubt uh, here are our shows in Ireland for fair soon. Uh, Darren, thanks for sharing your memories. Uh, it's great to know that they're still uh, very much rooted in your memory at uh, 20 years on. Uh, mm -hmm. There's no signs of amnesia setting in. Uh, <laughs> Not yet. yet anyway, which is Not good yet. to see. Uh, Darren, pleasure to stay safe and hopefully please God will speak again sometime in the near future. Thank you, Jim. Thank you for having me. And as well, stay safe to you and your fans. Cheers. Take care. Thank you. Take care.